So is the is the Gita's essence bhakti? Well, there are different ways of analyzing what the essence is. In the tradition itself, it is said that you can look at five things. If you want to know what is the essence of a book, mm -hmm. look at what is said in the beginning. Look at what is said at the end. There are Sanskrit verses for it. I won't go into technicals. Mm -hmm. But look at the beginning. Look at the end. Look at what is repeated the most. Mm -hmm. Look at what is distinctive. What is given here, which is not given elsewhere. And look at what is spoken in the most emphatic terms. So look at what is spoken in the most emphatic <clears throat> terms. So okay. now these are broad, you can say non-sectarian criteria. And we could apply these to analyzing what is the content of the Gita. So I would say that the Gita is like a pyramid. Uh -huh. A pyramid means it offers wisdom for people at the level that they are at. For somebody who is at the level where you know, Karma Yoga is the best for them, where their connection with the divine, with the transcendent, with, with the higher spiritual truth can be, ex can be expressed and established through action, then Karma Yoga is the action connection. Then we have Jnana Yoga is the knowledge connection. Mm -hmm. There is Ashtang Yoga or Dhyana Yoga, which is the meditation connection. Mm -hmm. And then there is Bhakti Yoga, which is the devotion connection. So the Gita is like a pyramid and everybody at whatever level of spirituality or even non-spirituality they are at, mm -hmm. now they can find some level at which they can, uh, they can connect with the Gita's wisdom on the Gita pyramid and they can raise their consciousness. So in that sense, the Gita's wisdom is <clears throat> inclusive. What is written in the beginning is the Dhritarashtra Shloka, just talking about the battlefield. What is written in the end is the conclusion, which you just said. What is repeated the most is Bhakti, because it's written by Srila Prabhupada. That's what my thing is. The other person will not repeat that, that Bhakti aspect that much, maybe. I'm not just... Uh, so the criteria gets mixed. With what is emphasized most on is again Bhakti, on Srila Prabhupada's version. No, I mean, let's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how important is it? Because as I said, the Bhagavad Gita includes wisdom for everyone. Okay. Now, I could go into the number of verses which talk about Bhakti uh -huh. and Bhakti Yoga uh -huh. and Krishna talks okay. about me and remembering me. There are dozens and dozens of verses about that. So, we don't, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't understand why is this issue so important? Because I'm, yeah, because yeah. Uh, this is the most read Bhagavad Gita in the world now, because of course okay. of uh, the Srila Prabhupada's idea of spreading it all over the world across the cult caste culture mm -hmm. creed. Um, <clears throat> again, the same question is that. Uh, so uh, this is this is a, a very big conflict right now, which I have faced uh, multiple times. That okay, uh, there is no <clears throat> scriptures are perfect. Okay, Vedas are perfect, Upanishads are perfect, Bhagavad Gita is perfect. But what is not perfect is your or my interpretation of that word. You can interpret it and that's the, be that's the beauty of our scriptures that it is open for interpretations. You you can take what, what affects you, impacts you, how it impacts you as you said. But it the flaw is also there that <clears throat> in the modern times influence is much bigger authority than any other thing. And then, as I said, they, if your influence is more, if your followership is more, your version becomes the correct one. And the essence might get lost. So th that's the main conflict between um, a lot of people. And that's why the next part which I will come to is the distribution of Bhagavad Gita all over. <clears throat> but yeah, okay. as of now, the conflict is yeah. that uh, because okay, there's... Now, now I'm getting the context yeah. over here, what you're trying to say. So two points I will say that first is that uh, Swami Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada was asked that in future, now, as you know, he went at the age of 69 to America all alone mm -hmm. with no money, with no followers, with no institution to back him. And in last 12 years of his life, he wrote over 70 books and he established 108 temples. So he wrote a commentary in the Bhagavad Gita in the, in this commentary was published in 1968, 60, 70 at that time phase. Mm -hmm. And then he also wanted to comment on many other books. Mm -hmm. So he was asked, which future books do you want to comment on? And he said, Bhagavad Gita. So you already commented on the Bhagavad Gita. He says, the Bhagavad Gita is very deep. 
there can be many different commentaries on the bhagavad gita hmm. so he himself is not claiming in any way a monopoly on the bhagavad gita so his commentary is a commentary on the bhagavad gita which is explaining the wisdom of the gita but that does that mean that the bhagavad gita's wisdom is to be reduced to that one book no bhagavad gita is is a wisdom which is oceanic and that's why in the tradition there have been so many commentators who have been commenting on the gita so broadly speaking if if we read the gita as i said swami bhaktivan swami prabhu pad doesn't hide the sanskrit mm-hmm. he doesn't hide the english transliteration of the sanskrit also he keeps it mm-hmm. and he lets people think about what he is doing and as far as bhakti being emphasized no i i i don't see any way that it is only in prabhupad's translations krishna talks about remembering him mm-hmm. now remembering him is it's not it's not so much the focus in karma yoga in karma yoga the focus is more of detachment anasakti anasakti mm-hmm. yeah in jnana yoga the focus is more on contemplation a cultivation of knowledge mm-hmm. in dhyan yoga the focus is more on meditation but different people may have different conceptions of what to meditate on mm-hmm. once we start meditating on krishna the person that becomes devotion so now if we consider right from the second chapter in 261 krishna says tani sarvani sanyamya yukta asita mat para focus your consciousness on me then 330 mai sarva etu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya mat para offer all your work to me fix your consciousness on me as the ultimate spiritual reality from there if you go on the fifth chapter that he talks about fourth chapter he talks about see all living beings as part of me yad gyatvan punar moham evam yasya pandav yena bhutani ashishani drakshasya atmanya atho mai see all living beings in relationship with me in the fifth chapter he says that that see me as the ultimate object of worship yagya uh, he says that so shant gyatva mam shanti nuchati in this way if you know me to the ultimate truth mm-hmm. bhakta ram then you will attain the ultimate reality in the sixth chapter five times krishna talks about how he is the ultimate object of meditation 615 630 631 647 mm-hmm. so four times then in the seventh chapter onwards so in general the traditional way of analyzing the gita is that the first six chapters focus on karma yoga mm-hmm. the middle six chapters focus on bhakti yoga mm-hmm. and the last six chapters focus on gyan yoga okay so i just give you a sample that in the first six chapters itself there are many ref- references to remembering krishna in the middle six chapter in each chapter you can say there are dozen references mm-hmm. and i can go into the last 18 chapter last six chapters also and there are verses where the bhagavad gita itself the sanskrit itself says in this way know me fix your mind on me remember me remember me so the bhagavad gita does have a clear uh, consistent emphasis on bhakti okay. now does this mean the bhagavad gita rejects other path you know that is the beauty of the teaching of the bhagavad gita in the broad vedic tradition mm-hmm. it is not a one zero or digital kind of spirituality it is analog spirituality okay that yes it is not this is right and this doesn't mean this is, has to be wrong okay this is right and there are different people who are on the same journey so the bhagavad gita emphasizes bhakti but that doesn't mean that it anyway rejects karma yoga it doesn't reject jnana yoga it acknowledges not only that they are valid paths but they are valuable paths they are also very very potent in elevating people to a higher level of consciousness so as i said within the pyramid everybody has space in the gita and you could put it another way rather than saying that you know shila prabhupad as gita is widely distributed mm-hmm. and it is given the bhakti tradition we could put it another way that prabhupad is simply correcting a balance True. before shila prabhupad there were many other teachers who commented on the bhagavad gita and they didn't give a bhakti commentary so at at the very least we can say bhakti is one of the teachings of the gita isn't it mm-hmm. there is no doubt about that mm-hmm. so if there are other commentators right. who have consistently downplayed the aspect of bhakti krishna is saying fix your mind on me and there are commentators who say actually you don't have to find the mind, fix the mind on krishna you have to fix the mind on the unborn within krishna now krishna is not saying that so they are basically downplaying and denying the bhakti aspect 
So if we consider a pen, if at all you want to put it that way, that Prabhupada has emphasized bhakti, mm -hmm. then I would say that is simply balancing things. So the many of the commentators before that, if you consider a pendulum, they had downplayed and denied bhakti, and they had emphasized other aspects. So Prabhupada's commentary, you could say, it is highlighting bhakti, and overall. People are intelligent. You know, people who read the books, mm. they will read and they will themselves make sense. You can say the Bhagavad Gita commentary, Prabhupada has been, Prabhupada's commentary has been distributed widely. But thoughtful people will read it. If they find it, some of the questions, they will look for answers. If they don't get answers, they will move on. And if they're really interested in the Gita, they will read some other book. True. But there are people who have read the Gita, Prabhupada's Gita also, and they have actually not only assimilated the Gita's wisdom, but they also shared the Gita's wisdom. And if yes, I'll conclude this point that lastly, in general, within the genre of say, academic studies of Hinduism, Hindu presence was very less in general. Mm -hmm. If you consider the International General Journal of Hindu Studies, there are hardly any Hindu scholars over there. True. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple or two, three decades, you would say inspired by Srila Prabhupada and ISKCON, there are many young thoughtful people from the West and even increasingly from India, mm -hmm. they are studying the Gita, studying the broad Indian tradition and they are representing it. True. So I would say that the more people come in contact with the Gita's wisdom, it is going to help to create an intellectual and spiritual revival of not just Bhakti as taught by Srila Prabhupada, but also of the broad Vedic tradition.